Um, yeah, just to introduce myself briefly, um, I think I've met so many people already, but my name is Patrick Webb. I work for Platra Viejo, and I'm, my formation or the way I was trained was as a heritage and ornamental plasterer. And uh, the company that I work for, Platra Viejo, is a very old company. We've been in continuous production since 1880, and uh, you can see this is a horse-drawn carriage. The words here say uh, Montier Coloré, which means uh, colored mortars. So we've been doing integral colored mortars since that time. We've been doing a, um, a training here the last couple of days. And you can actually see a lot of the stupierre and other colored mortars downstairs. So we have big, large samples, uh, things that some of the <coughs> students were working on and some of the folks undergoing the training. Um, I'd like to start off with uh, a quote because I think it really embodies what I've always endeavored to do in my practice, as well as what the school really stands for. And it's from Vitruvius. This is an old woodcut um, the Renaissance made uh, depicting him. It says, neither natural ability without instruction, nor instruction without natural ability, can make the perfect artist. Let him, the artist, be educated, skillful with the pencil, instructed in geometry, know much history, have followed the philosophers with attention. So I, th I found his words very inspiring, and you can see why Palladio, Alberti, Serlio, and some of the other great Renaissance architects really uh, followed Vitruvius. This is going to very much change um, as the power shifts from the church to the state in uh, the period that we sometimes call Rococo. And uh, at this point, um, particularly the influence of the Louis, Louis XIV, and Regency style, but then the, the Sun King, Louis XV, <coughs> who becomes the, really, the, he completely ascends. Um, he is the power in France. Really, he's the main power in Europe, and the church uh, is definitely less. And we have a corresponding change in, in the architecture, very dramatic. Um, the floors remain plain, but the walls lose a lot of their what we think of as classical details. They realize at this point that the exteriors and the interiors did not have to look the same. The exterior is an exterior environment. It needed columns, it needed support, it needed these great entablatures. But those columns are replaced by panels. Heavy stucco ornamentation is replaced with appliques that are gilded. And then as you raise to the ceiling those large entablatures, you don't need to protect the interiors from rain. You have soft coats. The ceiling, Plain. Typically in Rococo, with the exception of a couple of palaces, uh, where there's an excess of decoration, but for the most part, <coughs> this is in Versailles. The ceiling is very unadorned. This was also a reflection of the natural world. It was a departure from the idea that the, the ceilings were to represent heaven, but the floors are the earth. The ceiling, uh, the walls represent the natural world around us. You'll see a lot of natural ornamentation the uh, seashells and, and flowing arabesques now on the walls. And the sky is like the sky when we look up in the sky above us. Sometimes they were literally painted a soft blue. So insides were to give you an open, airy, exterior feeling of the natural world.